Welcome back. The Judicial Service Commission will consider four candidates for the position of Chief Justice, including two Constitutional Court Justices, the Supreme Court of Appeal President and the Gauteng Judge President. The names of the four candidates to succeed former Chief Justice Mokhweng Mokhweng are Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, Justice Mwiseli Malanga, President of the Supreme Court of Appeal Mandisa Maya and Gauteng Judge President Dunstan Mlambo. They will now be interviewed by the Judicial Service Commission and considered by leaders of political parties in Parliament. We're joined now by Dan Mafora, Research Officer, Counsel for the Advancement of the South African Constitution, CASAC. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. So President Ramaphosa has made his submission to the JC after considering the recommendations of a panel headed by Judge Neveth Nevenetham Pillay. Now, that panel evaluated more than 500 candidates submitted by the public. But the question is, why these particular four? What is that uh, in your mind? Why they make the cut? Good evening, Tipi. So thank you so much for having me. Um, so, I mean, when you looked at the, the list of eight that, were, that first came out of those candidates that met um, the requirements that were set out by the panel, it was very clear that some of the candidates um, either didn't meet the criteria for appointment or had some, you know, some uh, issues around their conduct um, or their integrity that would ultimately compromise them. So even from the beginning, we saw that there were actually four people who were at the, the, the very front of this race. Um, and these are the names that emerged from mm. the process that Dan, the president Dan, can I just jump in there and ask you, is that why the president put forward the names of the four candidates, considering the report of the nomination panel? Does that mean or suggest that the panel cut Nelson and Chloe for from that list for that reason? So I definitely think uh, that that might have been the reason. Um, we certainly expected the president to actually narrow down the list uh, to at least two or one name even. Uh, but we're very surprised to see that uh, a, a, a list of four, in fact, is going to the JC at this point. Um, so we definitely assume that uh, the panel removed uh, Judge President Lope and Advocate Nelson from the list of six uh, from the previous round. So the president gave the impression that he'd very much like a Pablo public acquiescence uh, or even endorsement of this process. The Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa is uh, currently the acting Chief D Justice. Does that give him an edge, even though there's some who are vehemently opposed to it? And looking at his uh, qualifications in comparison to others, his leadership positions and extrajudicial work, do you think that uh, he is a few paces ahead or does he still have to fall under that stricture that looks at appropriateness? It's difficult to say uh, whether or not or to evaluate these candidates uh, against each other because they are such different people. And it was a very interesting choice for the president to choose a public uh, process as opposed to you know what we've seen in the past where the president uh, chooses one name and that person goes to the JSC. Because what it means is there's something obviously that the president is considering and we obviously don't know what is in his mind, but clearly that uh, there's something that he's looking for and wants this process to go ahead before he can make his choice. But ultimately, the choice is his and um, th there's, there's, there's very little that, that the JC actually or anyone else can do uh, to change that, it will be his discretion. Mm. Let's look at some of the arguments they would then have to look at. Justice Mandy Samuel Linda Lomai, for instance, is the only female candidate at this point. Some would argue, isn't it time for gender to be at the foremost of consideration, given the seriously high number of gender-based violence and femicide crimes in this country? Or is that a spurious argument? But she has been director of the International Association of Women's Judges for Africa region and a lawyers against abuse patron as well. Sure. I mean, uh, Justice Maya is uh, definitely one of the, the big contenders. Um, I think, as, as, as you rightly point out, we have never had a female chief justice. Um, so that might be a, a weighty consideration. But arguments against her appointment is that, you know, she has been doing such a great job at the Supreme Court of Appeal, and it's only been a matter of about four years 
um, and that that court could could uh, probably benefit more from her leadership and stability uh, or, or, or leadership stability for a while. But of course, um, the president might want to be seen or might want to be the first person to ever appoint a female chief justice, and then that that counts in her favor. She has also held position uh, leadership positions, as you say, outside of the judicial space, and so. Uh, there, there, there are a lot of factors at play here, and you can see that the president is trying to buy some time because this is a very difficult situation okay. uh, uh, decision to take. Let's look at the other two candidates. There's been some objections to Judge President Dustin Mlambo's candidacy. Were they fair comment? And what about Justice Majlanga? Why do you believe he made the cut? What uh, is special about him? What characteristics does he bring? Right. So Justice Matlanga is uh, the last judge, if, if I'm remembering correctly, who was appointed uh, directly from the bar and not uh, uh, or, and, or was not a judge at the time that he was appointed to the Constitutional Court. He also was one of the youngest judges to be ever appointed in the country before his uh, resignation, and he had quite a, a stellar career after leaving the bar. And so he's highly respected um, among within the profession and by his his peers, and uh, a, a, a quite a strong jurist as well, uh, with a broad knowledge of the law and experience. And so. There, there are certain qualities in each of the candidates that you know you may actually want in one candidate, but of course that's not possible. At the end of the day, you have to weigh those out and sh and decide which which ones are important to you, and that's what the president will have to do. Mm. And what about Dustin Mlambo? So uh, Dustin uh, uh, Judge Mlambo is also a respected candidate, obviously because he runs, uh, he heads uh, the busiest court in the country. Um, is 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 known for you know. A, a, administrative efficiency at the Pretoria High Court, um, Ryan runs quite a tight ship and is also a respected uh, a leader um, or lawyer in, 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 in his own respect. And so uh, all, all of them are candidates who have various strengths um, that have shown themselves out over the years. Um, but again, it is a very difficult decision to take and the president will have to decide between them, um, between uh, between them, what he he he, he values uh, as those uh, those characteristics. All right, and, and just very briefly, do you think there will be convergence between what the JSC wants and what the president himself believes is best? So I think it's going to be interesting um, because we've seen how contentious the JSC interviews have become. Um, we might actually find ourselves in a situation where the JSC wants something completely different. Uh, from what the president wants. Um, but of course, that will all unravel itself once the JSC uh, convenes for the interviews. But ultimately, okay. the decision will still be the president's, uh, at the president's discretion. Thank you so much for your time and insights, Emma, for a research officer counsel for the advancement of the South African Constitution or CASAC.